Have you ever listened to Hollywood movies or your favourite TV series and thought, man, that music sounds cool. I'd love to have a go at making that music, but I can't do it because obviously you need to have some sort of music theory knowledge or play the keyboard or piano to even be able to think of where to start. Well, to a certain extent, that's true, but... Using the chord feature in Cubase, it's a lot easier now to create your own lush soundscapes. And in this video, we're going to take a quick look at some ways you can do it without even playing a note. I've got three instrument tracks here, a piano and two string parts, which I've colored so that I can see the difference. So these tracks have sounds in them already. I'm going up and grabbing my pencil and moving over to this grid area holding down with my mouse on the piano track and just dragging to the right. Now I've created a four bar event and you can see those four bars on the grid. Now I'm just playing my keyboard controller, which is how you might record if you've got a keyboard controller and if you can play the piano. But if you don't, double click on that event and down the bottom we get the key editor. Once again, I can grab my pencil and find a note that aligns with that piano scroll on the left hand side and again, hold down and drag out to the right to create a two bar note. Down here, I can move this line here to change the velocity or the volume of the note. And this is in the controller lane. So this is where we control things like volume and pan. Now I can use my eraser to click on that event and delete it. I'm just hitting control Z to undo that. And now I can also erase it by clicking on it with my arrow and pressing delete. I can extend the window into a full view by clicking on this arrow. And now I've got a much bigger key editor, which is really handy if we want to start building chords. Chords are really important in many areas of composition. And a chord is basically a number of notes over the top of each other played at the same time, like this. So that's a chord. It's a chord that actually goes for one bar. That's a different chord. And that's a different chord. So each chord has its own color and its own texture. Some important things about chords are basically the amount of notes played and the type of notes that are combined together to make a chord. Over in this drop down menu here, you can see a number of different chords, which are basically different flavors of note combinations. Click on that little arrow, hold down with your mouse out in the grid and drag to the right and up and down to change the starting note of the chord and also to define the length. So that's how far out to the right you drag on the grid. When you're happy, let go with your mouse. You can always move the notes around with your arrow, providing they're all selected. So it's easy to change the chord selection. If you don't like your chord, just use your arrow to select them all and then delete them on your computer keypad. So once again, we just choose the flavor of chord, get our mouse, drag out to the right, and select the note length. There's two things that can be really important when you're creating a soundtrack, and that is the chord color, because that can add tension or it can ease the listener into a sense of security, and also space. So faster notes together, again, create more suspense. Long drawn out notes can create space, but also tension because you're not sure what's coming up next. Another really important factor in soundtracks is the volume. So if I pick up in the middle after I've selected all of the MIDI events and drag up, then it's played really loudly and it's also distorting. So I need to be careful that I don't raise it too loud. See how that softer playing or access to the softer samples in this VST instrument actually sounds a little bit sweeter and the softer tone actually gives it more suspense. But if I select just these final notes and drag the velocity up a bit more, I can have more suspense by having those last notes played a little bit louder. Now I'm highlighting everything and coming down to this little icon here, create chord symbols. And I'm just gonna ignore everything and hit okay. Now we've got three new crazy looking chords, which are fairly complex in nature, sitting on this new track, which is called a chord track. To add a track on its own, you'd have to go up to this plus icon here 
and just click on this little triangle and there you can see the chord track. But you can only enter one and Cubase has automatically done that for us using the key editor and those chords that we've created. It's analyzed the notes and turned them into chords on this master chord track. Now chord track is now playing these chords through the piano track, but we don't need it there because we've already got the chords. Watch what happens if I select a string track. Cubase is now playing these chords that I created without any thought through the string part, and it's doing it with a different voicing to the original piano chords that I created. Now, that creates a fuller sound. You don't necessarily want two parts copying exactly the same as the other part, and that's another thing that adds texture and drama or intensity to a film score. Now I'm selecting to monitor the chord track back through the piano track, and I've created an X box with my pencil. Now, if you click or double click on the X, you'll either get the chord editor or the chord assistant tab, and you can basically switch in between the two of them. The editor will allow us to come up with some very simple chords of our own, or we can add different flavors by adding more extensions to these chords, or you can play a clump of notes on your MIDI keyboard and it will tell you what that chord is. So you can still choose your own chord and find out what chord you're playing. Over in the Chord Assistant, you've got these complexity settings, which are offering you suggestions based on the chords that you already have before the blank chord or the chord that you're choosing in the chord track. Now, the simplest chord suggestions are going to be the ones towards the top or the ones in complexity one, two, three settings. But obviously there's nothing there because we've got a really complex chord progression here. But don't be stressed out because you're not doing the work. The Chord Assistant is giving you the guide or it's giving you suggestions, which is really cool. And we can go further up the complexity settings for more complex suggestions. So basically, you can impress the hell out of your friends with some really crazy compositions that you might never come up with on your own. Let's see how this last chord sounds. I like that. But there's one thing that's noticeably different about that last chord, and that's that it's sitting in a different register to the previous chords. So now I'm dragging that down into the piano part, and I'm going to get my glue, and I'm going to glue these two events together by highlighting them and clicking once inside. Getting my arrow again. So you can see down in the key editor in the lower zone that we've got those three chords together, and then the last one, there's the three there, and the last one that we just added is sitting well down in the register. So I'm highlighting all of the notes, and I'm using this inversion function right here just to move these notes up one at a time. That's great. And what I really like is the drop in velocity. You've got that intense note on the third chord and then it drops down to a softer velocity. That also sounds really lush once it's played through the string part. So to get it all down into the string part for good, we just basically highlight it all and just drag and drop. You don't even need to hit Option or Alt. Okay, so whilst that was playing, I was gluing all of those MIDI events into one, and now it's a matter of mixing the track. So I'm just dropping that fader on the second string part until I feel like it's sitting nicely under the piano part. We don't have time to do a whole composition in one short video, but let's continue on and just extend this section into maybe another small section which develops. So another section that's using different chords. So to do that, once again, I've got my pencil and I'm entering these boxes with an X. I'm using the computer cursor keys to go backwards and forwards to listen or preview these chords. And when I want to try a chord, I can simply click on a box with an X to bring up the chord assistant to start previewing a chord choice. Now, whilst I'm selecting this, I want to reiterate that there are no rules. Do what you want. This is your composition. No one can tell you that you can't do this because you haven't been to music college or had music lessons. Once again, use your ears. But 
follow some key directions in terms of things like how often do we place these boxes with an X for chords? Do we do them every beat, which is going to be very rigid, so it's going to be like chord, 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 or do we place two chords a bar? So chord space, chord space. So for one, two, three, four beats per bar. Or in this case, I'm putting two chords in one bar, and in the next bar, I'm only putting that one chord in. Now I'm only placing one chord in the next bar and one chord in the bar after that. So I'm basically creating some movement and then I'm withdrawing and I'm creating some space. So these are all really important techniques in terms of composition. Instrumental music is on trend with music streaming services at the moment. They can't get enough of it because people love listening to instrumental music. So if you can compose and create this kind of music, all you need to do then is be able to upload it to a digital distributor and understand how to work with the algorithms to make sure as many people as possible can listen to your music. Now, I think I've finished this development section, so I'm just going to highlight it and drag it down onto the piano part. And before I go and, I guess, glue it all together, I really need to listen to it. So let's check it out. So there's my movement. Space. More space. And there's my final chord. Now I'm going to repeat that with the string part and just drag it down onto this string to track. And have a quick listen. I'm almost semi-tempted to leave this part out of the strings and bring them back in here. So once again, leaving parts out and placing them back in in different sections also adds interest to your composition and your music production. Now I want to show you something ridiculously cool. I'm going to go over to Media and let's go to Loops and Samples. I'm going to go down to something quite unexpected here. This is basically a rock pop toolbox which has a whole lot of MIDI or small MIDI components or MIDI parts. To preview one of these parts I basically click on it and wait for the sound to load and for it to play. The crazy thing about what I'm doing now is I'm listening to a piano part from a completely different genre to my composition but bear with me here. When I find something that I think is going to help boost the track, I'm going to drag and drop it into the middle of my track, not at the start. And I'm going to copy and paste by picking up on that handle. Now I may need to do some messing around inside the instrument. So I'm editing the instrument, and this is Hellion Sonic SE3 with the Hellion Symphonic Orchestra Pack. And I'm just increasing the dynamics. And now let's have a listen. Once again, I'm using the mix console to blend the sound of this string one part. But the remarkable thing about what's just happened is the chord structure from that original piano track is completely changed. It's now following my chord track. And all I'm doing is just adding a final chord onto the end. Let's have another listen to this last section. I'm really happy with that considering it's come from a pop piano part and I could really get in and edit the dynamics I guess to create even more suspense and really tidy up that ending. So I'm just going to glue these parts together. I want to show you another really cool thing that you can do in the key editor especially with strings. I've selected all of the MIDI parts and I'm going to go up to this length tab here and watch what happens now. It's changing the note length dependent on how far I move it to the left or to the right. To the left is shorter, to the right is lengthening the notes. So I've managed to transform a ridiculously short and truncated piano part from a different chord progression to fit into the chord progression and style of my composition. Let's have a listen to the whole thing from the beginning.
There's still a lot of work to do to clean that up, but that's a fairly simple and straightforward process, and it's really easy. And to be honest, it's not that time-consuming. Now I could go through and find some sound effects or some audio snippets from my media bay to add some more intensity into this chord progression or composition that I've created. In the meantime, thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. I love creating music like this inside of Cubase. There's no other door that allows you to create such complex music so quickly and seamlessly. Please stop by the Cubase YouTube channel and subscribe for plenty more videos like this. Give us a thumbs up if you've dug this video and of course leave us comments and let us know how you create music in Cubase. I'll catch you soon.